Well, hello everyone and welcome out to the Cars, Bars, and Guitars podcast episode number 25. I'm AJ. And I'm Steve. Steve, who are we brought to you today by? Which liquor was this? <laughs> Eagle, <laughs> Eagle Rare. Cheers. Delicious? And nutritious. It is nutritious. Um, I, f- I think it was on Cheers. Um, I'll tell you about Eagle Rare in a second. But it was, uh, he was explaining, it was the smartest thing I've ever heard. And I don't know why I never heard it before. But uh, it was, you know how when there's a pack of animals and the... They have silly names? Yes, absolutely. The the last, like, you know, two or three stragglers who are sick or old or or weaker, they get killed off. Well, every time, uh, that's why it makes, after after they get killed off, it makes the pack stronger. And, you know, it's... So when you're drinking beer, you're killing off all the shitty brain cells and the the weak ones. So you're making your brain stronger, which is why you feel smart after drinking a couple of beers. Any, uh, you think there's any truth to that? I don't know, but I've heard the same concept and fully stand by it. (laughs) Or right now, sit by it. Yes. Uh, Steve and I are drinking Eagle Rare. It is uh, a rare eagle. Well, it's... (laughs) From the makers of Blanton's, and that's even more an obtainium. Yeah, uh, Buffalo Trace is the name of the distill. And I looked up top. I need a much bigger sheet of paper to trace a buffalo. Thank you. <laughs> I looked at uh, the, the top bourbons under fifty bucks, and out of the fifteen of them, four or five were made by Buffalo Trace. So, uh, and I, I went up to ABC store and I got us a bottle of Elijah Craig, which we could probably just keep it to one kind of bourbon a day because. You have places to be eventually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but after that, uh, it, it was uh, there was a lot of Buffalo Trace. But we also have something we're going to sample here shortly, which it's supposed to go in the bourbon. It's you're supposed to make a drink with this. Do we dare? We don't have anything to stir it with. But um, what do you say we get about? I don't know. Maybe I think we should just try it straight up. What do you think? Sure. It is Domaine de Quentin. It is French ginger liqueur. Is that one of one that you have there? Um, yeah, I would give you. I would totally give you a, a bottle if I had to. It came with the Elijah Craig. It was like a buy this, get this free promotional thing. Uh, the ginger liqueur is, oh my goodness, that is tiny font. Twenty eight percent alcohol by volume. See if see if you can decipher that with your slightly older but better eyes than mine. Is that a three or an eight? Looks like an that eight. looks like twenty eight. All right, fair enough. We'll uh, we'll open that before we crack. We got a lot of good stuff today. I owe Steve for taking me to the hospital yesterday. My wife is okay, everybody, but she had a bit of a an kidney infection, which is a bit painful for uh, anybody, but especially the ladies. Uh, Steve, what's new with you in the last two weeks? Work still sucks, but I have an interview tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> Positive vibes, yo, because he's already driving one. <laughs> Speaking of, it's oil leaks gotten worse. <laughs> mm. Where's it leaking from? Uh, at least the earlier sources said it was the valve cover gasket, and now it's gone from a quarter every 3,000 to 5,000 miles to a quarter every 500 miles. That is a bit. It is full on spy hunter, yo. Uh, well, how much is how much is that valve cover gasket? Don't know. It, it's in it's in need of that and brakes and you know windshield like ver- various little things like upon possible new employment <laughs> that probably means newer car. So so with great hesitations, like just how much do I want to fix on this thing right now? Now, if you got the job, wouldn't you'd probably wait a couple weeks to months before replacing, right? You know, if it's a job that puts me on the road, I That's... still would not assume like drive. Their car. Well, that's true. I <laughs> I've didn't... got a, I've got new odometers to rack up, man. Yeah, it was Kirk. It was Kirkman's old job, so it's got to be a lot of travel. So yeah, okay, that makes sense. And they don't do they don't do car allowances, do they? Ooh, we can back on that. <laughs> yeah, all right, that might be negotiable. I think that might have been <clears throat> part of how he went from O one Outback to O fifteen Outback. He, he does like his Scubaroos. Yep. Uh, um, which Subarus don't l- really love head gaskets too much, evidently, after a little bit of research. But. Uh, I think the the old one saw about 180K before he gave it to his folks. All right. And this one, I've heard no trouble out of him. Well, that's good, so then. 
He must have had a, the Wednesday head gasket. That's got to be a pretty hairy job to do, considering everything's turned at a 90-degree angle. But uh, ne- never worked on them. Uh, my uh, 20 episodes ago fantasy about having an XT kind of waved bye-bye. I don't need another toy. Nah, I'm still looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking. I'm just not pulling the the proverbial trigger on that if i do that at all i'll do it downstairs on my newly acquired pie my gt on gt2 <laughs> yeah it's uh, much easier to tune when you're just hitting buttons it is it really is it's easier to say oh yeah i'll spend eight thousand dollars on this and yeah. instead of that in real life i mean you could have all the tricked out you know first gen wrx's you want <laughs> With the uh, very 90s three-spoke wheels that are always available. Oh. <laughs> Have you seen the uh, the teddy bear wheels? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I should, Emily had seen no- those in uh, car magazines back in the day. Like, that's a real thing? And yeah, then the- seeing pictures of those, like, Radboard or whatever. Like, <laughs> well, okay. There's also ko- the koala ones. and I- Are those only available in Holden's? I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so. I've been really getting into spirits. Told Steve uh, off mic before, thinking about putting a little bar. Makes you a bad atheist. Pretty <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. I see what you did there. Uh, thinking about putting a bar in the house, some more stuff. Uh, I had a discussion with our favorite uh, hyper New Yorker that's a horse racer about uh, <laughs> about the differences between you know rye and whiskey and bourbon, and scotch, and I told him, I don't really think I could tell you, I don't think I've developed it enough, I don't think I've had enough of it that I could tell the difference, and he goes, well, you could probably tell the difference in scotch, because it just has that that distinct flavor, but the other ones, it, he said, you'll have, to, you'll have to get yourself more acclimated, do you have any, could you sit there and pick apart, or are you just like, what tastes good? I don't even know if I could tell apart in a Pepsi challenge. I think you could do that, and I think we should. <laughs> that's, a, that's an exaggeration, but still, it's just like, all right, this one's sweeter, but that's about it. <laughs> we could, uh, we could per, do the per, per uh, previous episode, the Dr Pepper off. Yes, I uh, Tom or uh, or also uh, auto, other automotive grapes, electronic things that shouldn't be <laughs> e brakes and door handles. Yes. I can't believe we both forgot that because I hate it. We, we it was do. Like right afterwards, like, um, I forgot something. Anything like that. And or, I raised you a start stop. Or push button. Like, even even the yeah, C. That, that was the answer to the question nobody's asking. You know what's really inconvenient? Putting a key in. I don't like, I don't understand this. The start stop's supposed to be for fuel economy, but isn't that just wearing your starter out like 50 times? Isn't that more expensive than waste? Ugh. It's it's and I don't personally every time I take off yeah every time I take off from a stoplight I don't want to hear yeah every single time you really want to hear that every time it's a particular nuisance valeting or like you know if I got to take it through an intersection it's terrifying having that car cut off yes release brake then it starts itself back up fuck you especially if you're on a hill I'm waiting for the first idiotic manufacturer to do start stop in a manual transmission car and just really scare us all to pieces <laughs> uh, this is excellent it doesn't have the uh smo- super smoky in i really really like or the that. sure wallop of you know the burn the earth yeah i i don't want the centerville pennsylvania of it all True, you know the four roses, or was it the four roses that you had that you said it was good, but it was kind of like gasoline. That was rough. <laughs> yeah, it's it makes a great mixer because that that burn cuts through whatever drink you're making. But if I'm just sipping on something, I just want something that's smooth, not too sweet, excluding the maple knob creek. Uh, but I almost bought a tea. What did I almost buy? It was a ti something not the rapper uh but it was like a whiskey blend that's a calculator <clears throat> something 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 I, I don't remember what the fuck i searched for but it it was really good um it had a lot of good reviews but i, I ultimately decided on the elijah craig because it was super super highly rated and uh, uh andy Rated it pretty well too, so uh, we, we we always talk about bourbon and shit like that. We need to, he's gonna come over one night. We're gonna have like a 
bourbon and cigars night, so you're invited. Surprise. Hooray. Twist your arm a little bit. Um, so other than job, so job and car, so what car do you think you would uh, theoretically replace the Vibe Tricks with? An update on the same concept. So something in the Toyota Matrix Cyan IM Mazda 3 realm. Gotcha. You know, a a new, newer tiny wagon with good gas economy. Kind of like the Corolla. As much fun as a, uh, you know, say a Focus ST may be. Um, you know, I don't, I don't need this uh, burning holes in my uh, license points as well. What about the Fiesta ST? Uh, Go get fisted. Same diff. Also, I'm not 100% on how reliable one of those may be. Well, you could still... Because a buddy of mine had a lesser Fiesta, and it broke as soon as it came off the lot. No shit. Um, I haven't read. I haven't read anything bad. A couple of guys on Oppo Talk have uh, have been fisted, and uh, they said it was pretty reliable. Uh, but I, it was, I've always been intrigued by it too. But the thing is, after having a little bit of more ground clearance, I kind of like that because if you're driving that much, and I'm driving about fifteen thousand miles a year, I hit a lot of shit. <laughs> so if I can hit more shit sitting up higher, I would like it better. Plus, it's turbo and it's fun and. I don't need another car to spend money on. I already have one of those things. Um, they had that. Well, it was some kind it's, of it's meme. It's a tiny car, though. It would fit already. True, but I, it was a meme on uh, somewhere, and it was, uh, I will not, I will keep this car stuck. I will keep this car stuck. And then, like, a one week later, fuck. <laughs> Steve, I'm Ampless. It's gone. Somebody finally bought it. Good. I, yep. Now I can make room for... Well, what's funny is uh, Emily's like, oh, you sold... Uh, she goes, so you're not going to get a new amp until you get rid of the old one. And I was like, right. She goes, well, what'd you sell the old one for? I said, 125 She goes, how much is a new one? I said, $800. She goes, that's not really a good trade. I was like, no, I told you I would get rid of the what, old one. For what it's worth, <clears throat> you made 50 bucks on the previous one. True. That's where it's at. Yeah, and you I know, had it 10 years. You know, it's not a matter of, you know... <laughs> Oh, it's like, you know, it'll put a dent. It'll, you know, knock off the first 15% towards the new one. <laughs> it lessens the blow. Not much, but it lessens the blow. Well, you can add that to the show uh, that I played. I think I haven't told you about it. The one that was in Greenwood, South Carolina. I don't, I think I did not tell you about that because I think we recorded before then. Um, Toby couldn't make it, so it was a solo show. So it was two hundred bucks. I was like, okay, I'll make two hundred bucks, and cool. Made a hundred and ten dollars in tips. But those people get fucking down, and that was just in a two-hour show. So I'm like, I'm just the whole time. Every time somebody would drop a five in there, I'm just thinking, new amp, a new amp, and in my head. But man, those people like to party because partly because there's jack squat to do in Greenwood, South Carolina, and I'll never take the way I took. Uh, next time we're playing there in March, March, <laughs> and then no April. We're playing there in April, Ma- April, April, March, April. <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. The future. What do those showers bring? <laughs> uh, playing there in April, and like the way it takes you, it takes you through Rock Hill, and then you get off on Bob's Road, and then you take John's Road to some tr- gas station where. There's a fork in the road. Anyway, I stopped to get gas and something to eat, and um, I get out, and the outside of the service station smells like piss. The outside. At the gas pump. Nobody's around, and I'm like, you know what? If the outside smells like this, I don't think I'm going to go in and get me anything to eat. So I just stopped at a marathon gas station later down the the line. Sandy would appreciate that. (laughs) Um, But, yep, took the interstate back, and even though it said it was 30 minutes further... I made the exact same time because the magic of the interstate at 10 o'clock at night, there's not really a whole lot going on out there. Uh huh. Straight up 20, or on the way home, it was up 26 and then up 85. Uh, although I will say, Interstate 85, basically from Greenville to uh, 20 miles outside of Spartanburg, they're working on something and there's those barricades super close by. Every, so the concrete ones? Oh my goodness, it's... When a semi truck comes barreling by you and you're tiny, oh, so it's still two lanes at it's that. It's two point. lanes also, or a lane and a half. For a so you're feeling like you're playing pole position. So if you hit one of the boundaries, you're going to explode. Yes, and it's 
uh, for 35 miles like that, it's garbaggio. <laughs> Especially when you're in a hurry to get back home and, and your Jeep's a block. It's just square, and then any gust of wind makes makes it jerk to one side. And, oh, here comes a semi-truck just barreling by me on the left. Uh, kudos to him, though. He stayed in his lane, so still blew the shit out of mine. Uh, <laughs> bigger box. <laughs> bigger box. <laughs> You want beats a smaller box? A bigger box. Oh, boy. I am excited for some of the beers we got coming up. We were supposed to do 21st Amendment beers, but you know what? Guess uh, what, guys? I've got a couple of those, so you're not completely out of, <laughs> out of that. Well, the tw- 21st Amendment was bringing... 18th was Prohibition. 21st was fuck you Prohibition, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Um so what was the? <laughs> I need to go back and listen to the other episodes. Like I don't understand why we decided to do Twenty First Amendment because for- uh, the middle of last week was the hundredth anniversary of it having been approved, and so they had a year for that to become law. Okay, okay. Holy shit! I just opened the ginger liqueur. Whew. I can see your nose burning as you take a whiff of it. It it's ginger. I say we make a little. I say I want to bathe in it. Put, put a little. Put a drop in there. I'm gonna put a little bit in mine. You, I'll put. I have to put a little bit more than you do because I got a, a little mm-hmm. more drink left. But uh, we don't have anything to stir it with. But uh, it it smells the part. Uh, I've never heard of this company. Um, and it does look like a travel bottle of shampoo. Uh, but as long as it doesn't taste the part. You know what? I've had a pretty couple good shampoos in my life, and uh, the trick is you got to get the two in one with a conditioner. Just really, it really cuts through. It really makes it smoother. <laughs> I heard, allegedly, that some alleged adult entertainers, uh, when they are uh, using blades for shaving areas that are a little more sensitive, you use uh, hair conditioner instead of shaving cream. And that keeps bumps and uh, redness down. And there's like no bumps, no redness or anything. It's just a smoother shave. Suck at edge. <laughs> uh, we don't have anything to mix it with, but we'll just kind of give it the old homogenization with the with the hands here. Um, that smells weird. That's good. <laughs> it's actually really good. <laughs> Granted, we mixed it with something that it's not a bourbon it came with, but it's still pretty rad. Sure. Is this rad? <laughs> yes, your rusted out Subaru Justy CVT three cylinder <laughs> is rad. Now get off the internet. Yes, 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 yes. Wait, we need to have a celebrity death match off. Which posts, what, what's more posted about? The new Supra, <laughs> or, or is this or rad? Is, is this rad? Is the new Supra rad? No, it is not. <laughs> it is f- ugly. It just needs a rhinoplasty uh, and a proper transmission. Well, and a better. engine that we could trust beyond twenty miles. Yeah. Other than all that, and you know, I didn't even like the rendering because you know a lot of times the concept cars, uh, people say, oh, the concept cars never look like oh the and, FT1. Yeah. It looked pretty similar. It was it was similar. It was a little more sharky and angular and pointy, but um, still didn't like. I still didn't like that. I really don't like the new Supra. It's just so, uh, it, the, the design's busy. It's very well. And it's an awful lot of you know, fake vents. Like, well, you can open those up to do what? <laughs> uh, I I'd really. It's a still it's still a better investment to buy the old uh, an old clean one, and the engine's better, and I think it's prettier. But I like I like simple designs, and I'm pretty sure you do too. More, you, you see, you like. Well, you can tell people what you like, but what I like is I can I can't, I can't words that. <laughs> I do. I like a simple design. I don't care if it's angular or I don't care if it's curvy. I just like a simple, clean, which is why I'm not. I never like body kits or anything like that. Um, when even that one was a now, big often thing. because those were done so badly. Like, well, here's this thing duct taped on. Like, <clears throat> it's not been painted. It's not been fitted properly. The gaps are big enough to fit a phone book through. Mm-hmm. Hey, remember that, kids? 
ever since Demuro pointed it out, I can't unsee it. But when I see a G wagon uh, parked, you can you can totally see if you walk up to the driver's side. Uh, the doors the the, in the door gap, you can see all the stickers on the inside of the door from the door gap. Like, I mean, you spent how much money on this fucking thing? And uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to grab the it, other It's not bottle. often I buy a Mercedes from the disco era, but when I do, it's going to be freaking expensive. Like yesterday, I parked next to one at Marshall's. <laughs> Got to keep the Russians nervous. And their thundering herd. <laughs> <laughs> Be right back. I got a crash. <laughs> that was that was D- Dave Matthews was playing when that happened. <laughs> oh lordy, um, I need to go get my real ID. You know, have you you've heard about that, haven't you? Yeah, because your license isn't enough to travel via states now. Yep, because I, I messaged my mom last night after I got back from the hospital with Emily about like nine thirty. I was like, "Hey, do you have my birth certificate?" And uh, she goes, "I think she goes, I got it somewhere." Um, she goes, why do you need it? I said, I'm going to change my name. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get You're changing your name to AJ Hold. I would change it to what my grandfather's name. If I if I could change it. Well, I could change it. But the thing is, I've already lived, as of next month, 33 years uh, on the planet as AJ. I mean, I at this point, I'm not changing my fucking name. But his name, I would have been, they almost named him after, uh, they almost named me after him. They almost named him after me. That's. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> if I had a DeLorean, I'd only drive it from time to time. <laughs> uh, uh, they almost named me after him. I would have been Augustus Clifton Holt the third. Way cooler fucking name. Same AC. AC. They called him AC or they called him Buck, That's which is weird because there's not a B in his fucking name at all. <laughs> Did he like the hunt? Don't know, but he was a great cook. He was stationed in Italy in World War II and picked up a lot of cooking. That son of a bitch could make some spaghetti. It was such a... Oh, it was so good. I, I can actually still taste it right now. And I was four when he passed away, and I could still taste that spaghetti. It was so, I don't even know what he did with it. Because he didn't really talk to you. My brother was telling me about this. He, uh, he would talk to you. Um, he would tell you he loved you, and then he would grunt, and then he'd tell you to get out of the icebox. If you went to the refrigerator, you didn't have to open the door. Get out of the icebox. They hid their money in there. <laughs> get out of the icebox. Tell it cold, hard cash. Yeah. He was also weird, too. He would sit down with dinner, and he would have like a meat and two vegetables, and he would sit down and with no drink. He would not drink anything during his meal. He would sit down and eat all, like, say it was potatoes, green beans, and a steak. He would eat all the potatoes, and then eat all the green beans, and then eat all the steak, and then sit down and drink one glass of water, <laughs> religiously. But there's weirder things to Whatever be. works, sure. <laughs> weirder things to be. <laughs> See? Uh, I, I would have the, uh, the the combination platter. Mm-hmm. Like, here's a bite of steak, but I'm going to jab my fork through the green beans, take a scoop of the mashed potatoes, <laughs> then stick my fork in the steak, eat everything at the same time, repeat that a few times, while drinking a water and a beer at the same time as yes, well. Yes, absolutely. Got, got to keep the nostrils busy. I have, I, have to have, I have to eat it in, in a way that I have one bite of everything left. It doesn't matter which one I finish with, but I always do. That's with any meal. If it's burgers and fries, or if it's meatloaf and potatoes, or anything, I have to eat it where I have... One bite of everything left, and then I can go and have one last thing at a time. Hmm. I've always done that, except with cereal. But <laughs> you have to have at least two pieces remaining in the milk. We've had bourbon and ginger liqueur in these glasses. Should we at least pretend to rinse these out before we start with beer? What beer is this? This is ringing. Bourbon Barrel Aged Isabel Imperial Porter from Blue Mountain Barrel House. Uh, Imperial Porter Aged in Bourbon Barrels with Cocoa Nibs, sorry Cocoa Face, and Orange Peel. Should we rinse out or just kind of go That with... sounds close enough to the theme. All right, fair enough. All right. Uh, Should have done that on mic. I'll, I'll pour and you read. How about that? I'll pour on mic. Well, it sure as hell can't read from here. I can kind of hear that. <laughs> I have not submitted our podcast yet to WFAE. 
I'm getting if I don't get around to it, I'm not going to be terribly upset. We're not going to get picked anyway, so I mean, it's this is a bit non-safe for work. <laughs> well, we could have well, we tried. Uh, I still got time. So, Steve, tell us a little bit about what we're about to be drinking. <laughs> Isabel ringing. <clears throat> Inspiration is easy to find if you know where to look inside a barrel up in the trees, half a world away. Named for Isabel, Princess Imperial of Brazil, a leading producer of both oranges and cacao. Oh, hey, Portlandia. Isabel was also a member of the Royal House of Bourbon. In the sublime Imperial Porter, residual malt sugars from the beer meld with the cacao nibs to produce an intense chocolate flavor, Mm. while the orange peel adds a citrus undertone that carries the oak-imparted vanilla and bourbon flavors on the palate. Blue Mountain Barrel House Series is a line of specialty beers from the Blue Mountain Production Brewery known as the Barrel House. Just down the road from our original facility, the Barrel House Brewery also resides in Nelson County. (laughs) Where the woods are deep, the mountains are bold, and great beer flows through the land. Try each style of our exquisite original beer. At Blue Mountain Brewery dot com, <laughs> eight and a half ABV. Very nice. Haven't smelled it yet. Uh, oh my goodness, this is going to be a good one. It smells like Sixlets, <laughs> the chocolatey orange I candy. Like those. I, I love like those six- a lot. <laughs> good tank. Yes. It tastes like Sixlets. <laughs> Oh, that's from if that's from the mountains of Virginia, that's not too terribly far from here. That is not. That oh, is um, groovy. That's really good. That's that's a new top ten. That's fantastic because it's not overpowering with chocolate or orange. That's that's really good. They had a uh, they had a specialty release bottle because the the guy that works at the ABC store here in Mint Hill is super duper nice guy. And I was in there again. He uh, he's like, hey man, how'd you like? This was like two weeks ago. I bought that bottle of Eagle Rare, and he's like, do you like the Eagle Rare? Two weeks ago, and he still. Remember, I mean, granted, I'm not the hardest person to pick out of a crowd, but um, I was like, dude, it was awesome. Uh, and I had the bottle of Elijah Craig. He goes, you're going to love that, too. He said, it's really good. He's a little bit burnier on the end, but not much. Have you tried this? And I don't even remember what it was now, but it was a Virginia whiskey. Um, he's like, it's a special release. He goes, everybody said it was really good. So he said, we got a bottle of it. He goes, it is delicious. And I looked at it, I was like, oh, this looks nice, $90. I was like, I don't feel like spending this today. <laughs> I'll just take your word for it, unless you're just giving out free samples. I'm going to need a better music gig, thanks. Well, just maybe one. If I had one extra this week instead of just one, maybe. But uh, just one at the Grumpy Monk. See y'all on Saturday. Uh, are you... All right, Brian's party was last week. You, ever got, you guys got anything planned this week? I don't know if I got to work or not. Oh, yeah, back it's, on the weekend thing? It's still all hell breaking loose because W-2s are due out the 31st and we're still printing those. It's, this month's been dreadful. Well, January is the Monday of the year anyway, so... This has been the Mondayest of Januarys, <laughs> of the Mondayest of years. That's either got to be a band name or my next album title, the Mondayest of Januarys. <clears throat> But uh, I could absolutely get on board with this. This uh, I should have bought more. I do know a place that sells it, though. Old, old T, uh, TWM out the uh, Providence Road. Have not been to the one at Concord Mills yet, have you? No, I haven't. It's got to probably be pretty similar to all the other ones, I would think. I haven't had any bad experiences. Some people kind of you know poo-poo on Total Wine, but I've... Does all- your story carry to the everything and then some more? <laughs> hey... It's too bad 201 Central closed, because that was actually a really neat... It was a neat idea. Is the one in Weddington still open? What's that? Is the one in Weddington still open? Yeah, I'll get back to you. I think there were all of two of them, and the one on Eastfield closed. Yep. And that's currently under construction to be presumably the new food dog. Yep, and I thought it was going to be like something different, but it's going to... I think it's going to be like a healthy, organic something or other and we haven't heard anything back from it i wouldn't be opposed to working at something like that but i think if i had to work if i can't do something podcast music or beer related in my next job and it has to be retail i'd rather it be something that i know something about like 
craft beer or like a specialty shop like 201 was um, because I know more about that than I do produce and vegetables and such. But and that's what I sell for a living now. Don't eat them very much, but speaking of, got dinner plans? Yes. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Every like time. Like I said, the one two weeks ago was the only time that would have worked. Yeah, it, the uh, Serena Stir Friday, this will be uh, Stir's Day. Stir's Day. I, I, well, you can do it. Like, if we do if we do that, because Taco, Taco Tuesday just rolls off the, the tongue. Taco yep. Thursday doesn't, even though that's... Well, no, I had a quesadilla today. I went on the border again because I still have gift cards, and I still will blow that fucking place up uh, figuratively with my gift cards. So if we're doing if we if we start meals with every so something Sunday, steak, steak Sunday, steak Sunday can work. That reminds me out of propane. Whoops. Hank Hill would be very disappointed in you. I don't even like the show. Sorry, I didn't. Um, I felt because where I lived, I felt like I lived it. <laughs> so, but now I can appreciate the subtle humor just because it's Mike Judge, and even though it's a redneckulous show, it's still Mike Judge. Dale Dale is awesome anyway because he always thinks the government's out. He always has these like hard the like, government conspiracies. Um, that can't all be Boomhauer. I liked him because he can't understand what he has to say. I work with a couple of Boomhauers. <laughs> <laughs> then at one time they met Boomhauer's mom, and she talked exactly like he did. And then another episode, they went into Boomhauer's mind where he was listening to everybody else talk, and everybody else was talking gibberish. He couldn't understand what they were saying, and in his mind, when he was talking, it was normal, <laughs> which was awesome. Oh, boy. Uh, well, if we got steak Sunday... M Mon- meatloaf Monday, all right. Taco Tuesday, W Wednesday, wings, wings Wednesday, Thursday. Is there any food that starts with a th that we would want to eat? It would kind of roll off the tongue. The th- Thursday, Thai, Thai Thursday. Close enough. If it is a th, <laughs> hey, <laughs> five. You didn't special five. Five Thursday. Five Thursday. Five Thursday. <laughs> that could. Hey, that could be a horrible. Southeastern pronunciation could be chicken thighs, could be wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Stir Friday kind of has to, it's, that's kind of the, the default. And steak Saturday. Steak two days in a row, you decadent capitalist pig. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, so would you rather have a really good steak or a really good burger? So, and. Before you answer, are we going to account for price in this? Because a top dollar steak is always going to be more expensive mm-hmm. than a top dollar burger. But do we account for price or do we just account for flavor? Flavor. Then let's do flavor. And for what's worth, you can do more with a burger considering like what goes into it, what goes on it. Yep. Like, let's say you've got something super unkosher. That's the bacon burger. So you've got bacon on it. And or ground into the beef. Mm-hmm. That's pretty rad. That's the second time. We need to post all this. Uh, you know, for what it's worth, I was still eating my delicious mushroom Swiss burgers. All right, you can hold your mushrooms back in the 90s. Therefore, favorite burger style is, in fact, rad. <laughs> so, here's a fun fact. The mouse automatically turns itself off after use. So the batteries won't go dead. Because I just tried to use it. Steve got me a wireless mouse. Did you have to switch it back on and off? Yeah, I did. Okay. But that's pretty cool. Well, it was five bucks. So, like, other, like, fancier models will do the same thing, but you don't have to jostle the power supply. I'm okay with that, though. Um, Thanks, Five Below. Thank you, Five Below. And thank you, Steve, for being my uh, my technological uh, guru. I was going to say Muse, but uh, have you listened to much Muse? No, I haven't, but I think the more I do listen to them, the more I like them. It is brilliant. Um, they are, my just personally, the way I would describe them is that if prog rock grew up in a, in a household where the mom listened to nothing but electronica and the dad listened to modern hard rock and they all had a baby, that's what Muse sounds they, I want to go see them live, and there's a song called "Survival," which I don't think, I don't know if you've heard or not. Well, the lyrics time are, picking those songs out because I can barely understand him. The lyrics are super cheesy. Is he the muse? 
Maybe. No, that was Salma does he, Hayek. Does he, <laughs> does he play in the evening? Does she play in the evening? I would like to play with Salma Hayek in the evening. Also, yes. Um, it There's a song called Survival, and like on Wednesday mornings, that's the last song I always listen to on my phone before we the store opens and I have to turn my music off. It's such a motivational song, even though the lyrics are super cheesy. It was the... Uh, it was the the official Olympic song for 2012 uh, Olympics in in uh, Britain. I watched those as much as I did any Olympics. None. <laughs> I I do only because well I'm I'm more sports oriented than you are, but I I find myself watching either that because Matt Lem, our our, our uh, diminutive friend Matt Lemon had asked me one time. Um, he was like, "Why are you watching Olympic hockey if you don't watch regular?" I was like, "I want to watch." The best of the best. Um, I know NHL is good too, but the thing is, there's there's fights and shit in NHL that there are not in the Olympics, and I don't I don't get why if you fight in the NHL, it's a part of the game, but when people fight in the NBA or the NFL, everybody just calls them a bunch of overpaid thugs and shit like that. it doesn't make sense to me. Does it you? If you fight uh, in one sport, AJ, it's because there's a bunch of white people playing hockey. That Duh. is true. That's true. That's true. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then you'll you find know, a brother you know, on the road from here. The racist track. How many? How many? How many brothers do you see ice skating or playing hockey? So, I mean, I don't remember none of that from Blades of Glory, <clears throat> or in uh, or in rock music. Because uh, when Howard Jones was with Kill Switch Engage, there was a video where Adam Dukowitz, I think is his name, the lead guitar player. He uh, he's like this next song is about when Howard tried to go water skiing. It's called "When Darkness Falls." <laughs> <laughs> uh, they uh, you haven't listened. Well, you you did listen to them, but not. I, I think once I was out of my twenties, I think that was time to stop. I, I still I, I'm still kind of a new newer. If, if I can dig up those CDs, they're yours. I I got them. I got all the ones I need. I got You've the ones got with Howard. You've got two cars. You need double CDs. <laughs> um, I read something so fucking cool, and I was gonna actually post it to Radwood and to uh, Malays. Cassette sales in the United States last year, in 2018, were up 23 <laughs> percent. New cassette sales. I so mean, they they went from selling 100 cassettes to 123 cassettes. I was going to say 1 to 24, but yes. So I, who buys? I mean, secondhand, absolutely. All day, it's a talking point. It's just cool to whip it out and put it in, especially if your still works in your car. But new cassettes? Who makes new cassettes? That's actually become a thing. Ugh. Uh, in the words of the great Joe Ray on his podcast, Joe Radio, <laughs> lots of shitty cars out there, bro. Well, even my, the Jeep has a cassette player, and but it, and I and it works. I would never buy the cassette was a fucking horrible idea when it was brand new. It I never had trouble with it. Like it, I killed my Back to the Future soundtrack playing that in the end all the time when I was seven. So then uh, Huey Lewis sounded a bit warbled. (laughs) (laughs) The shitty part of it was that you... uh, (laughs) I was looking at the waveform, like, eh, that looks no different. (laughs) The the shitty part, though, was it was like, oh, I want to listen to the third song. Okay, fast forward, fast forward, shit. Not enough. Fast forward, fast forward. Ah, oh, shit, too much. Back, back. Ah, oh, too much. Although eight track, you could say the same thing. Um, uh, yeah, I, I had I had otherwise pretty good mileage out of tapes, and would always get the longer tapes to record stuff on. Mm-hmm. You no, know, always getting the hundred twenty minute tapes instead of the ninety or sixties, mm-hmm. so I could fit as much as possible on the tapes. Mm-hmm. Therefore, still have you know. No, bootleg CDs on the cassette of whatever, but like <laughs> after twenty plus years, I've got my doubts those would play very well. Like that's certainly not out of necessity now, since you know a cheap flash drive does the same thing better. I, I had to explain to a coworker of mine who is half of my age that no, I was like, no, when you wanted when when you wanted to hear a song multiple times. And you did not have the CD. You sat with your boombox 
and in with a record with a tape in the tape deck, listening to the radio. Up next is Stone Temple Pilots, and you sat there with record and play on your fingers. And as soon as it started, and they were like, "That was how you did." It's like that's how you had to do it. <laughs> they looked at me with this blank stare, like, <clears throat> "Are we that old?" <laughs> If only I had, I had friends with better CD collections, and I had my my first CD player was the parents' old one, a 1986 BSR, because when they got the CD changer, they didn't need the single player anymore. <clears throat> which, if you played a scratch CD on that, <laughs> it sounded like a modem. <laughs> the old 56k dial-up, right? I thought about making my. I've had my phone ringtone the same for so long. I, it would be weird to mix it up. But I thought about making my text notification the AOL Instant Messenger. Uh, yes. <laughs> I was thinking the Gran Turismo sound effect, like you bought a car. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> but no, thank you for. I'm not going to get anything done now that I've beaten Super Mario World in its entirety. Which you can't get to 100% on. You can now get your 98% on. Um, GT two, like, apparently True. the game the game was buggy. So like you complete everything and it does not add up to a hundred percent. Nope. Same way with Mario. And it, in fact, on the pie, it's even. I thought uh, Mario World is ninety six. It's ninety six on Mario oh, like, World. Because only how many levels they had to clear. But I have it on ninety three, and I still that can't get it to go any higher. Sounds about like what I did on the original Super back in the day with Game Genie because the bonus round in star world is impossible i beat it but i beat everything when i say i beat everything i beat everything in super mario world but on the pie it still says 93 what i think happens is after you beat bowser in the castle either the back door or the regular um you can't save it after once you beat it and it goes through the credits it goes back to the home so you can't save it so i've beaten the entire game and i even went through world by world and counted and i went through on the internet and counted and made sure i beat everything so i wasn't missing it and i did beat everything so i was like okay 93 is the highest you can get on the raspberry pi folks so there's a top gear top tip for you uh on super mario world you can beat every world and still only have 93 yeah but did you beat brutal mario yet <laughs> not yet but i haven't tried I need to get my video game chops back. So I don't know. That, that probably doesn't have all the hacked ones on it. Well, which Mario was the... Was it one? It was... The the hacked versions of Mario World Okay, were the ones that were most entertaining. Like There are the hacked ones on the NES, and those are just plain just difficult and difficult to look at. Um I was showing Emily like some of the games I played growing up, other than Demon Sword, which is still hilariously weird. Um, very, very Japanese. Mad ups, yo. Uh, very, very mad ups. Uh, but I was showing her Pitfall and uh, Burger Time. Another Pitfall Two and Donkey, the original Donkey Kong. <laughs> Mario's I played come, Mario's come a long way. Like Donkey Kong's brutal. I, it is, and then I played did, Dig did, Dug for a little while. Nice. <laughs> did you ever? Did you ever see, um, the King of Kong, a fistful of quarters? That about sounds, the high the high score challenge on Donkey Kong. Sounds familiar. That was cool. And now a few years later, more controversy is stirred up surrounding that one. Oh boy, what is it? Uh, the guy who's you no. Know, one of the champions, but a total dick bag. Mm-hmm. Remain a dick bag, like a like a not, R. Not Kelly anyth- dick bag. Or? No, just just more issues with that. Uh, can't keep talking. I got a drink. Well, hey man, it's half your podcast too. Do what thou wilt. Uh, we need to get another bottle of this. This is. Groovy and what in Virginia? You said the mountains of Virginia. Uh, well, assuming that Nelson County is in the mountains of Virginia, that's on the closer side. So take seventy-seven. Okay, Google. Where is Blue Mountain Brewery? The address is 
Address for Blue Mountain Brewery is 9519 Pritzer's Shop Road, Afton, Virginia, 22920. Okay, Google. Thank you for everything you do. You got it. <laughs> uh, I was totally expecting her to say, everything I do, I do it for you. One time I told her I was the inspiration for everything, and I believe she said it. You are very sweet for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you catch that address? No. What I'm doing is looking at ways in the tablet so I can punch in a oh. name. I still cannot. I'm, I uninstalled Waze. I cannot get it to work with me. It it, it will it's not. You. It won't find any address. I. It just won't do it. So I just use Google Maps, and so far so good. Let's see how far away this place is, because we actually need to go. I need to get me a gig up there. That's what I fucking need. That and Licking Hole Brewing. Have you seen that? Four hours, two hundred sixty miles. Hell yeah! That's hey man, that's not that bad. I am thinking about having a guy's trip up to that casino in, uh, in West Virginia. That's not even close to West. Well, it's close to West Virginia, but not the place I need it to be. Um, I'm going on vacation when Samir gets back from Bosnia. So thinking about having a guy's trip up to West Virginia casinos, if uh, if that interests you. Uh, maybe we can find some breweries up there. Yeah, it's like the- I'm, I'm bad at gambling, so this uh, let, lets me have my doubts. Well, you can come uh, be my sponsor. T- t- you wind up. Are you trying to quit? Oh, I'm not. I'm not a gambler. Poker players are not gamblers to me. Gamblers are people who sit at the slot machine all day, or people who bet on horse racing, or bet on any kind of sport. Really, if you bet on sports or anything like that, you're a gambler. If you are a poker player or blackjack, you are not a gambler to me. You're, it's a strategic game. It's a numbers game. It's a fascinating game. And had I uh, the bankroll some of these cats had, I would entertain the thought of playing more at more places. But uh, what are you looking at? It's near the town of Dooms. We got to go now. (laughs) We have to go get us. Which is oddly close to the town of Charlottesville. Womp womp. Womp. (laughs) Give it a shot. Well, my uh, sister and her husband live in Harrisonburg, Virginia, up there. And in that's, the... not, that's further up, too. Like, yeah. So it's like Harrisonburg. Well, it's not Winchester, so it's not at the very northern tip, but not far off. Yeah. It's better than Lose Chester. But I am thinking about having a guy's trip up there. Colin would, might be interested. It's Mardi Gras Casino. It's a, it's a New Orleans-themed casino in the middle of West Virginia. What a time to be alive. It's got a lot of good reviews. Yeah, it's got a lot of good reviews. I'd have my doubts on the seafood there. Well, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What if you have some of them Rocky Mountain oysters, Joe? (laughs) Uh, Not as bad as you may think. At all. Neither is beef tongue. Tongue tastes like taco. Tastes like tacos. Didn't like that. Yeah, I I, I liked it. Didn't care for beef tongue. I I, I liked it. I liked it pretty good. Um, Steve, you want to delve into some cars? All the time. Yes. All right, so the uh, the topic of uh, ooh. the topic of Grand uh, the Grand Tour uh, season three episode one was muscle cars. So James May had the Exorcist Camaro from Hennessy, and Clarkson had the RTR Spec three Mustang ready to, to rock. rock. <laughs> That's a cool fucking name. And then of course Hammond had a Dodge Demon. And, and I until they said it, I the didn't. Even, Damon reads the Exorcist. I did not put two and two together until they said that. But uh, let's go, muscle car. I have a book about muscle cars, and what's on the front, Steve? A Mustang Two Cobra. <laughs> it's a bit ironic, don't you think? Uh, there's a little bit. I said it's like that is a good look for a miserable car. Well. I'll be honest, black and gold is a good look on pretty... You, you, you'd you be hard-pressed to fuck up black and gold, so... Um, Best done on a 280Z, the bike gold edition. <laughs> so, do or we... top baseball cards. Let's... We're going to open this book, because we're going to go over it, but um, before we That's do... Like you already had the cover open a moment ago. Well, I had it open to here. You can open it again? Hmm. <laughs> Before we delve into it, uh, is there a particular brand or model 
of any of the muscle cars that you always gravitated towards, or did you actively like or dislike all of them? I particularly enjoyed the early GTOs, uh, if not the first gen, but the I guess second gen, like sixty seven with the uh, the stacked headlight models. That's always a good look. That like <laughs> that any of those late sixties GMs rocking that style, I always really enjoyed. That's rarely a bad look, I'll say. Like that, that was even mm-hmm. like my favorite Suburbans later on, like what the mid eighties. Cherokees were the same way. Early XJs were uh-huh. stacked. Um, and the uh, early the Wagoneers with that. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, bring back stacked headlights. Make stacked headlights I, great again. <clears throat> I think some companies have tried that, and it's gone badly. See the new rejected dinosaur Cherokees, or well, the new Hyundai... Which western city is it? In uh, Tucson? Like, one of them that looks... <clears throat> Like the Cherokee, done better. It's still not good, but it's less bad. Every time I see the new Cherokee, I think about Gilbert Godfrey. Because it just looks like this all the time. Although they did remedy that problem. And the new ones don't look terrible, but... They look like shrunken Grand Cherokees. And then the Compass looks like a shrunken Cherokee. At least the Compass Uh, looks like a... the, The new Compass looks nice. It does look like a shrunken Grand Cherokee. I still would not have one. I also still wouldn't have a, uh, uh, what's the fucking renegade because the nice fit <laughs> because of that, uh, one of our coworkers, it's, it's like if, for, for being baby Jeep, it is the best looking baby Jeep. It is. It's not, it has a little East, a lot of little Easter eggs everywhere too, in the body, uh, style. X's everywhere uh, on that car, it, <laughs> like it, 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 down to the taillights, like. Well, somebody really likes their Roman numeral tins. It's going to give it to you. <laughs> uh, our a coworker of mine was like, hey, I'm, I'm cross-shopping. Uh, she, she had a Santa Fe. And Is that it was, pun intended? Maybe. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to diffuse this situation. But she's like, I'm looking, she has a Santa Fe. and uh, Or she had a Santa Fe. She's like, I'm looking at new Renegades. What do you think? I'm like, no, don't. She goes, why? I said, it's an Italian engine in an American car, and I wouldn't trust it, and the transmissions are sketchy. And yeah, uh, she goes, those what? are all automatics of some sort. Like, at least, like, the Compass and the Wrangler still have a stick option. <laughs> yep, they do. Uh, so she and ended I'm up surprised getting, the tiniest one didn't. She said, I'm also looking at Liberties. And I was like, what year? And she told me the year, and I didn't even look it up. And I'm like, well, if you're going to go Jeep of modern era, go Liberty over Renegade only because it at least it's going to be cheaper and it's going to be easier to fix and get cheaper that, to fix. Get that diesel power. She got the Liberty, and it was the horrible round. Not this, even the square. Even the square Liberty is horrible to look at, but the round ones are the, really the bad. <laughs> so I, I tried to. I was like, she, I was like, oh, you got try. that Liberty? She goes, yeah. She goes, what was that for? She goes, I was like, well, because your Liberty body style is the one that, that replaced mine. The Liberty replaced the Cherokee. She, my Cherokee. She, she was looking at either mm-hmm. practically brand new car or one that's now fifteen years old. This one, surprisingly, I think it, she got an 08 Liberty. Okay. 10. 11. 11 with 60,000 miles. So it's pr- whoever had it didn't drive it much. It's actually in really good shape. It's like super duper nice shape. And she's a smoker. She doesn't even smoke in it. It's in that nice of shape. But I was trying to explain to her. I was like, well, look, your car was the one that replaced mine. And it is widely regarded as the worst restyle in the history of any vehicle ever made. Do you know where they sold that model jeep as overseas cherokee yeah. yep yeah. yep in china they still make a cherokee xj clone they made one up until like 2013 and it was like it, uh, it that, was that an sounds obvious good copy. except that uh it'll rust twice as fast <laughs> pretty much um so you, you dug the gtos preferably the the stacked headlights but and then, oddly enough, I also re- really enjoy the early Cougars with the covered headlights. Mm. Double stacked covered headlights. Double stacked Cougars. I like where this is going, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm looking up for research purposes later. 
Oh, you too. Am I turtly enough for this turtle club? Uh, oh man, I'll I'll tell you that story later off of my. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna uh, call that Nina wholeheartedly. Sh- I, I, <laughs> I would still play a Mario game of Super Smash Brothers with her, <laughs> if I you know what I mean. It. I always hated Smash Brothers. <laughs> I can't get into it either. <laughs> There's being bad at games, and there's being really bad at games. That game wasn't not as infuriating. Echo the Dolphin is the most infuriating game I've ever played. Oh, hey, remember the uh, water level on Ninja Turtles? Do that was an entire game of that? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, by the way, we uh, at work, and actually here, but then at work, we got I got the turbo fucking giggles about... Uh, I, we're going to go over it after we go over muscle cars because it's <laughs> going to be a Nintendo funnier. Switch controller that has turbo powers. No, you can't have it. it You're on your own to go to Ross and find one. It was, uh, it was 14 bucks. Chinese off brands or like really bad off brands of things. The oh my god, I laughed so hard because there's one of Superman, but it's a really bad Superman action figure called Special Man. <laughs> It gets way special man way downhill after that. I kind of special man. I kind of gravitated mm. towards Mopar. My dad was a Mopar guy. He had a '71 Hemi Cuda, uh, which he promptly sold for five thousand dollars in the '70s. Who would have known it would have been worth what it is now? So everybody, shut your fucking trap. You, you can't tell what yeah. cars are going to be worth. It's just real mm. funny to see like people going Gaga over Mark II GTIs. Like, yep. At the time, that was a very leaky death trap. Yep. Whoops. And now it's it's a collector's item. I mean, who who would have known? Well, look at the Tucker. How much do you think a Tucker would go at auction? A clean Tucker oh, would go. I think just a sheer oddity and low production numbers alone at, what, 48 of them? Yes. That's yeah. less surprising. I mean, how many cars got their own movie with Jeff fucking Bridges? Oh, hell Ever yeah. Ever see that one? No. You should. We're not going to rinse these glasses out, but that's fine. Uh, I have a s'mores. Let's keep doing what you're doing. Just like just get a little dab on your finger and just licking it off. Yeah, that'll, that's good enough. I had Don't a, do it to mine. No, I won't do it to yours. Uh, I have uh, the, the cherry step, but since we had bourbon and then a bourbon one, uh, we'll switch it to IPA now, and then we'll go back to that because then we're going to end with... God, I, if you mix it up a little bit, I think it's going to... At least make so, it. So uh, no fireside chat for you? You got a fireside chat? I've got a pair of them. We'll end with fireside chat tonight. Okie dokie. Hey, man, we got time. So. Yeah, cause, like, we had, <clears throat> had the tentative idea two weeks ago. I was like, well, I brought the thing. Like, I didn't pick up any more. And at this rate, um, I don't care. It's your turn to pour. Um, I'll tell everybody that because of my father, I was mostly a Mopar guy. I was much younger with the, the Cuda. What you got? We got the Rouge. Straight out of Newport. Oregon! Whoop, whoop. That is a menacing bunch of white people. It kind of looks like a combination of the Beastie Boys and Office Space. Yes. <laughs> Beastie Space. Office Boys. Office Boys or Beastie Space? Two. Beast- Beastie Space sounds I, like a forum. I, Beastie- I call it a zoo. Beastie Space sounds like a forum for for zoophilia. <laughs> <laughs> How much old school Bob and Tom did you listen to? A fucking lot. Tim Bedore's <laughs> bit about his zoophiliac daughter. I didn't. Re- I didn't remember <laughs> that. My daughter Lexi is really taking liking to sucking on the dog's nipples. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there you have it. I have a lesbian zoophiliac daughter. Well, this is fantastic. She and I have something in common. I mean, the lesbian part, not the zoophiliac part. <laughs> so she could grow and go play golf. She'll make lots of money. This is gonna be fantastic. <laughs> Dating's going to be not an issue at all. <laughs> Cheers. We need to use these glasses every time. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Is that another new top ten? This makes me want to smoke in a new port. What? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, fuck you, lungs. <laughs> yeah, not me. I'm cigar guy, definitely. So, fuck my tongue, I guess. I don't nah, know. Well, speaking of Mopars, uh, the Chrysler Newport... Because you need a car the size of Rhode Island. Well, Pops had the Cuda, and he had uh, 
73 Challenger, brown with white vinyl top and white hood scoop. Uh, automotive tri- but meanwhile, my automotive trims I'm glad are dead. Vinyl roofs. Those are True. icky. Like, is it convertible? No. Then don't have a different material roof. True, but in late Ugh. 80s with my sister Phaedra driving it with her Aquanet hair and getting out of that in high school and the Challenger where it was rumbling up, everybody thought she was the coolest fucking person in the world. That's what she drove to school. Uh, that was a that had a 340. I think the Challenger had a 340 in it with three two-barrel carburetors, a.k.a. three deuces. But uh, we had... He had a... My, he met my... I don't know if I told you the story about how my mom and dad met, so... No. Um, when my mom... I guess it wasn't on a blind date. <clears throat> no, it was at the illegal street races in Norwood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Golf clap from Steve. Uh, so you go on. Her friend was... I think her, na- her friend's name was Patty, and she was like, uh, you got... Have you met... Have you not met Roy? You'd love Roy, and, you know, and, and blah, blah, blah. He's, and my dad was divorced by then, because that's a long story. <laughs> but... <laughs> Well, after having Greg, this shitty person, uh, they come home after having their child, and she packs her bags and leaves. Yep. She deserted them, both. My dad and my my brother. Did you hear the Richard Rawlings episode of Joe Rogan? I have not, but I've heard like the first uh, five the, minutes, but... Apparently that, that re- was his upbringing really? as well. Like, A, that sucks. Two... That's unusual. <laughs> it's very unusual. Every now and then she'll call and she'll go, hey, uh, you know, how's everything going? He's like, fine, what do you want? And I don't blame him. But I don't blame him at all. <laughs> so I digress. <clears throat> um, that happened. And so my mom, and, so they bring my mom out to meet my dad, who's racing his Dodge Dart Swinger with a 440 in it, which is hilarious now. So it's funny because that was a small car at the time. Oh, yeah, and a 440 is not a Ge- small a engine. A generous amount of power. Like, Dad had a Nova with a V8 in it, and he was terrified of that car. Yeah. Uh, I believe... All right, so if my calculations are correct, a 426 is a 7 liter, so a 440 is a 7.2. <laughs> so it was a 7.2 liter V8 and a car the size of this table we're podcasting on. Um, <clears throat> so she would ride with him and blah, blah, And well, they've been together for a long fucking time now. So uh, that's how they met. So he's had the Swinger, the Challenger. Uh, uh, he had the Cuda, the D100 pickup, which I'm still looking for one like. Uh, so I kind of gravitate towards Mopar. Uh but I do appreciate all of them. Although I don't really get the fanboyism of the 68, 69 Camaros. They just, they look too similar to the Mustangs to me. But they all kind of look similar. Oh, it's Excluding though. Roadrunner. <laughs> 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 they wanted cards and coffee back in the day. Like, Those were like, <laughs> different panels. It's like, yeah, so here's, you know, multicolored Roadrunner. And then here's like the foot long model, and then here's the Matchbox car model. So it was a six inch model and the uh, the foot long. Yeah, model. it was. Yeah, it was a lot of subwaying, without a uh, creepy Jared Bird. Yeah, Tom Segura dodged that bullet, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> there, uh, well, there lies the AC Cobra, which is uh, Thomas's favorite. I can't blame him. Yep, uh, replica. It'd be a great uh, investment just for fun. Uh, you wouldn't have to worry about dinging it, finding an original. Good luck finding that three hundred thousand fucking dollars to spend on an original that you would up, way up, half to an entire mill. Yes. Then we got uh, second gen Viper, which is my least favorite Viper. What about you? Uh, viewing that from afar, I thought that was a C6 vet. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Least favorite. First gen, very striking. Second gen, tame. Third gen, awesome. Uh, the Chapter one is the forerunners, the pre-muscle cars. Oh, there's the judge. Here comes the judge. Thanks, Sammy. This is going to be hard to do, but we're going to try our best, okay? So uh, to to read this, yeah, I've noticed this is going on. Would have dug up that uh, laptop stand. 
which would probably hold that book just fine. I have my music stand downstairs. I this could too could work. Totally put <laughs> <laughs> totally put this up. It's sort of angled thing, like it is. And I and will like, cons- well. Uh, there's there's pictures and words, ladies and gentlemen. We're not reading this one for the articles. There's the Oldsmobile 442 Ooh. rocket. I got a dumb question for you. Is it coming red? <laughs> Red Rocket. A2. Um, no. <laughs> Did you ever see Demolition Man? Yes. When he like <laughs> takes that car to the museum, like, holy shit, it runs. Yep. <laughs> he has a wreck havoc. It's it, awesome. It's been a hilarious amount of time since the last time I watched Demolition oh, Man. Oh, it's still awesome full. Did you see the don't uh, use Blade to open box and it was a Blade DVD? Yes. <laughs> oh, shit, it was fantastic. Oh, let's presume. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's GM. Uh, we got uh, Impala. We got and a 58 Stingray. vet with flames on the hood. And a Stingray vet at the bottom that looks like a split window. Oh. Yeah. Nova. Uh, girl I went to high school with d- drove that to school. Um, it was a bright yellow Chevy Nova. Damn. And at the time, I thought she was cute, but she wasn't super popular. So I never, like, you know, talked to her very much. Which is so stupid. Looking back, do you have any idea, like, do you have any idea, like, knowing what you know now, like, it would be, like, really dangerous to go back to to, sc- <laughs> to school. I, oh, my goodness, I would be, I told my mom, like, she's like, don't say that. She goes, that's not nice to say. I was like, I'm sorry, mom. I would be a total fuck up if I went back to school because I would just be, all I would do was party and have sex because I was a really good student and it didn't pay off at all. So, Knowing what I know now, I would just go back and have more fun. I graduated 11th in my class out of 300, and it didn't pay off. I didn't get any scholarships because white male. But every other part of being a white male is kind of awesome, so I'll just let that slide. Uh, <laughs> so, let's see. It may look I mean, innocuous. The trouble is that that's now morphing into an old Louis C.K. bit, and we can't speak of that anymore. Hey, kind of. Uh, it got kind of icky. Yeah, the Dude, Bel Air okay. 409 6.7 liter V8. Uh, the Beach Boys wrote a song about it. Yes, they did. And I'm not a big Beach Boys fan. We're still in GM. Shit, that's half what I listened to at the Holden trip. The pre Stingray Corvette, uh, mm-hmm. Chevy Nova Coupe. Still very classy, very pretty. I would do a Risto mod on those. Having an original one of those, I- I'm taking the old Joe Rogan. Uh, Having an original old muscle car is terrifying. Risto mod it with modern brakes and suspension, and you're going to have much better time driving oh, it. Something I said on this very podcast was, you know, I don't give a shit if your old car is original, because then it's going to be terrifying and probably still slow. Yep. Uh, the 69 Marauder. I don't remember that. Do you? No. Matt Black Wait, strips I knew were in. That was. A thing back before the glorified Crown Vic, but uh, I did not know what that looks like. Like, was that the la- one of the last stock cars with a covered back fender? I th- think so. Um, that's a mad like, that's, pretty car. Yeah, like, but <clears throat> that styling cue, like, I could do without. It, yeah, <laughs> it's just too not. Just makes care. it harder to clean the wheels. <laughs> it's just, Hopefully not change it. Opposite above, 58 Thunderbird. Opposite below, wait, left, a sanitized, a 1978 sanitized Thunderbird. 78? No, that's an 87. That's a typo. That's, that, that is, is a typo. That is totally an 80s Thunderbird. Because they didn't have a 70s Thunderbird. There was, but it did not look like that. Fair that enough. That is a very 80s Thunderbird. That is a Fox Thunderbird. That's what my sister had. My sister had 88. Um, yeah, that I was, I was, that was why I was confused. I was like, there's no way the Thunderbird of that vintage ran for a decade unchanged. Nope. No, the, an Avanti. Yes, that's pretty. The, the the last remaining Studebaker until like 1990. Yeah. Pontiac right. built muscle cars, of course, as did Ford, Dodge, and Chevrolet, but Studebaker, sometimes ignored for not being part of the big three, little Studebaker did produce a couple of cars. Sometimes in the ignored 60s. because they the company folded before the muscle car era really started, except for the Avanti <coughs> lived on... Ouch. 
<clears throat> through some weirdness. Uh, have you heard of the Car Stuff podcast from How Stuff Works? Heard of it, not listened to it. Uh, of all the shows they've got going, that one actually ended. Oh, um, there's a thousand episodes. It's all right. the, uh, uh, the back catalog is generous. Evidently, the one Avanti of which was the Avanti. The Avanti was thirty four hundred pounds. That's light for that vintage. That's super I, light. Yeah, I was gonna say like that's with a four point seven four liter V eight. It would rival the muscle cars that were breaking the four hundred cubic inches. Obviously, because it was a thousand pounds lighter. <clears throat> that is, you, you say anything over three thousand pounds, like that's a porker. <laughs> and now, now it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, the new NSX is like thirty eight hundred pounds, but a well, lot of that's battery. Yeah, battery like, and trouble is lead, lead's heavy. <laughs> that uh, it is. That is also a Studebaker, a Starlight Coupe. That's rad. That's <laughs> third time today. Can you actually make a rocket launcher out of the headlights or that that middle grill bit? How about the bench seat with stripes? Um, <laughs> muscle car, muscle car. Like you take a turn in this thing, you're going to fly through the side door. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's funny is the, the special world of Super Mario is all hilarious 90s words and terms. Tubular. Rad. Gnarly. <laughs> There's GTO stacked headlights. Yeah, that mm. one. With a... Uh, oh, that one with drop top. Yeah. Uh, neighbor of my grandmother's, and when my when Toby bought my grandmother's house when she passed away, uh, Danny Maynard, he had a stacked headlight GTO convertible and never drove it. And Did it come with a house? No, and uh, I'll tell you that story off mic too. Let's just say when somebody works... For you, and then you have to close the plant after 50 years, and everybody gets fired. You shouldn't hold a grudge to my dad because everybody gets fired. It's not his plant. Yeah. I digress. <clears throat> uh, that's a pretty color. The Is it light purple? Like a wine. I was going to say wine. Like That's pretty. That's Bur- a really, burgundy ur. Yeah, that's pretty. That, oh, yeah. Where's it? This is just pornography. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's car porn. It's different. Yeah. Then I didn't really care for this body style that much, if I'm honest. Um, not my favorite. Not not ugly, just not. Ladies and gentlemen, we discovered fiberglass. Yep, yeah, just not not my favorite. Uh, and then red the... with red. Oof. Couldn't get away with that now. Uh, let's see here. Okay, there's a lot of GTO pornography in here, and all the uh, en- all the engine uh, options in 1967. Uh, more GTO. Well, this is a big fucking book, so there's Mustang. What are, what are we? <laughs> there's the new GTO. That's Holden. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, hey, Greg. Like, still didn't see that car. Uh, hadn't seen either of them since they got married. No. Is there any muscle car in here you want me to look up? Because we could be... This this book is like a million fucking pages. So. Actually, it's 435 pages. So, which just rounds up to a million in podcast. Yes. <laughs> is there any obscure <laughs> muscle car that you want me to look up in this book? So they got for cougars. All righty. Um... I wonder if there's like a... Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, here we go. Cougar, 300. Page 300. Ooh, I just saw a Dodge truck. I know what we're about to cover. <laughs> Three. Uh, you have to ask uh, Tom... Was the um the muzzle truck from 78? Something like the that. The Little Red Express. Uh, Thomas's... Or, uh, you met Will before, haven't you? One yeah, of, NASA kid. Yeah, uh, he had a 70-something Cougar as his first car. Damn. <laughs> um, this IPA was dreamy. Uh, this, that one was like a 74 Cougar because that was a monster. <laughs> so if I then it got so bloated. There we go. Ooh. That is pretty. Yep. I even I like the grill. I like the grill better than the Mustang grill. That's That's just cool. Every now and then I think about having an older car. But... Parts availability being unobtainium. 
That's it. That's all cougar. Yeah. That's it. That's all we got. You know, afterwards, it became, like, they went from being Mustang based to Thunderbird based. And by then, the Thunderbird was expanding too. It's like, well, then became personal luxury coupe and a living room on wheels. True. Just not interesting. <laughs> not at all. Because I've reached the Mark and I have had this conversation too, and I think you and I have too. You can always buy a faster car, but it's kind of smiles per gallon. Like what makes you f- what just puts a smile on your face? And if you wanted to go as fast as you could in a straight uh, on a racetrack, you would just buy an Ariel Atom V8, uh, and you'd be done. Like you'd mm-hmm. never have to buy. But the thing is, it's not that great to look at. So it's it's about how it f- makes you feel and. Just the visceralness, which is why everybody likes first gen Vipers. They're not wonderful to drive. The steering's super heavy. They're really comfortable though. The seats are really comfortable, but they're just it's just ostentatious and loud and it vibrates and I don't care. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm trying to find the Dodge truck again. Uh there's Ram. I don't want the fucking rent. There's a D500. I don't know what that is. Uh, it sounds one. like a military truck. That kind of does. Are you aware of the <laughs> trucks we race in the Middle East? <laughs> they do that. That's not a fucking... That's a Plymouth Belvedere. This the butler? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's by the child I never met it before. <laughs> I do remember watching that. Catfish Camaro. Yep. I <laughs> I like its Wow, sorry guys. Yeah, you know, I I liked its earlier self. You liked that one. Yep. Have you ever ridden in one? Oh, it's miserable. It's a horrible experience. <laughs> yeah. Um just you ever felt like you're just laying back in a barca lounger? That's what it feels like riding in. And ever by in the, the way, ever been in the back seat of one? Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this giant glass hatchback isn't giant enough. Not at all. And my least, one of my least favorite cars ever built is that the one Iroc. Of my neighbors has one. The Iroc Camaro. I hate those i don't like the way they look i don't like the fact that their v8 makes like double digit horsepower i don't like the interior i don't like anything about them anything literally anything and it was around for what 12 years it was a long time wasn't it god damn it man i think i feel like you and i could really design a car at least aesthetically we would have to get like Sean to do the engineering on it, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, as far as anything else, like, it, God damn, there's another IROC Camaro. Go to fuck away. Where's my Vipers? I want to talk about Vipers. <laughs> do you wish to watch and invite the windows? What was that? The uh, scary stories of telling tell the, the dark. Tell in the dark. Yes. RT ten three thirty two. I need to read this book. I'm not going to read it on here because then this doesn't become a podcast it becomes, it becomes an audiobook it becomes an audio although been, i've produced been, an audio been there book done that yes so. i have <clears throat> and there it is folks the viper and the prowler prowler would have been a lot better with a v8 uh even with an automatic transmission i can even forgive that but don't build that car and then put a v the 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 3.5 liter out of a 300M. At, it. Like, at least it was a GoFast V6 instead of it being the the lesser Plymouth Breeze V6, like the 2.7 or something that's going to self-destruct. The Plymouth Breeze, the Chrysler Cirrus, and the Dodge Stratus were all the same car. Yep. Completely indistinguishable. There's the interior of the first-gen Viper. Very, very bare-bones, very Shelby-inspired because, well, Carroll Shelby was... Kind of, you know, the A1 designer in this whole thing. But that was a Gen 1 Viper interior. You say that, and I was going to think Fisher Price. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> America, the Americans didn't really get down the... Uh, getting that, That's less bad. And lose, the, lose the red. There's the red with the yellow wheels, the old McDonald's mobile. 
I never understood that color condo. Condo? I'm not Combo? Kondo, Kondo? Uh, Marie Kondo, the uh, minimalist lady that everyone's going nuts about. There's the first second gen throw Viper books, I've ever liked. Your DVDs, throw out everything. That's the first second gen Viper I've actually liked the look of. That's actually not a bad looking vehicle. That's 2012. I'd still rather have a Gen 1. And then I'd rather have a Gen 3 after all of them. But uh, And there's the Prowler with the horrible interior. Still cool looking. Does this still shit up a Yaris? <laughs> or the Echo? <laughs> that, I still that think center mounted yep. speedometer. Yep. I feel like <laughs> if you silly. have one, if you have one, it needs to be the purple. But it, it's it's got to be the purple. I would still like I, that. Still turns heads though. It still has presence it's on the road. S- completely ridiculous. Yeah. That that's the thing too. Like, do do you buy? Okay, so assuming there's two. What kind of person buys a prowler? Then, now, who knows? Who cares? Do you get the trailer with it too? That's that looks cool. like an extra prowler <laughs> ass. You have the double acid prowler. Here's the thing when you buy a car, do you buy a car because you like it or because you like the attention it gets or a little bit of both? What's the percentage? Because mine is like seventy five twenty five. Yeah, about the same. Because you would get so much attention in that. It's a horrible fucking car. Yeah, horrible. But, but nothing looks like that. It's cool as fuck. It's cool. What is it? The cool wall on Top Gear used to be. Is it rare? Is it desire? There was like three parameters, and it had to meet all three, or it wasn't on the cool wall. Um. Or it's so notable it becomes uncool. Yeah, and I like the, the early Which is Cor- its own manner of infamy. Yep. So the early Corvettes are on here. I'm going to keep flipping, but because to me, after after the C4, the Corvette's not a muscle car anymore. The Corvette's a sports car, only because they actually made it to where it could go around a actual racetrack. So to me, a C5 is not a muscle car. It's a it's a sports car. C6 is definitely a sports car, and a C7 is absolutely a sports car. So I don't know why that's in the muscle car category. Um, let's see here. There's so much cool shit in here. We we could we could go through that all day, but we have more beer to drink too. Me too. Um, you're out of beer again. You going fireside chat this time? Yes, and you should too. If you've got two, then I'll take one. Well, you could totally um, people who don't people who say they don't like muscle cars are just lying. Mm-hmm. You you just you appreciate the the quarter mile to quarter mile stoplight to stoplight, just the 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 nostalgia of it all. Uh, if you say you don't like that, then you're really not a... If you don't like muscle cars, you're not a car person. To me. Maybe not a person. Also, yes. I but d- like to not have a pulse. D- Demuro's really cool, too, but he kind of gravitates towards the newer stuff. He doesn't really appreciate older stuff and, like, quirk. Like, he went nuts over the high beam switch being on the ground. But what else is your left hand going to... Or left hand. Jesus Christ. What else is your left foot supposed to do other than sh- than push the clutch in? Mm-hmm. The high beam switch goes on yeah, there. I, the only time I've seen that was on the 75 Impala. Mm-hmm. That was the pre-minivan mobile. <laughs> that never is not funny. Look at that. <laughs> and now I don't have to get... Oh, shit. All right. There we go. I turned it back on. Look at that. That's an impressive click right there, buddy. <laughs> Stupid cheap mouse. I love this mouse. <laughs> I, I don't have to get up to save this anymore. Um, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's good. I love fireside chat. That sounds like pee. Look at all that head. I hadn't seen that much head since before I got married. (laughs) 
I love fireside chat. I feel like though they should we should drink this in a koozie that kind of looks like a wheelchair. <laughs> FDR's on it. <laughs> Notice the wheels on that chair, by the way. There are none. <laughs> Thomas just sent me a text that let, said... Let, let his legacy outlive his affliction. That, Thomas sent a picture. I love my dog. He pulled the blanket over himself. <laughs> Australian cattle dog. That is a pretty dog. I still don't want a dog. Too much work. At least the kitties. Well, you specifically got a place that doesn't have a yard, so... That doesn't unless stop... You're, unless you acquire a dog the size of a cat. That doesn't you're, stop you're everybody not, yeah. in the neighborhood from having dogs. Especially, there's a couple doors I know, down. I like, oh, got out to get the batteries, and somebody's walking by with a tiny dog. Like, yeah. Well... Hi, hi, all right, you're friendly, cool. The, uh, the idea of a dog and a child are very intriguing, in theory. And then you realize what you have to deal with. And Oh, by the way. I'm having enough trouble with actual work, which pays. Yeah, well, <laughs> human, like, it's like, oh, uh, dealing with humans and human babies? It, it you, you I we both know what that entails, and then puppies and dogs are pretty much the same. How the <clears throat> fuck are there seven billion people on the planet if we all had to go through that phase in the first about two three years? <laughs> I know it makes Kirkman's libertarian uh, vein twitch, but I think we should go the China route: one child per person. For 50 years. The world is not sustainable enough to have this many people on it. It's just not. And I'm the youngest of four. And I probably should not be here. You probably should. You're the oldest of three. So you probably should be here. I should not be here. How, how old's your pop? <clears throat> 65. All right. Mine is 73. No, six four six. My dad's 72, uh, so they're about the same age. So, But he, he, ser- he served, didn't he? No, he, was, he wasn't no, able to No, he serve. wasn't able gotcha. to. With a, right. Like it was, and by the timing, was about too young to go into Vietnam anyway, but yeah. thanks to an accident at age two, mm. had no capacity <clears throat> to go in to serve in the armed forces. Yeah. Much like Emily's dad could not serve. He's colorblind. They wouldn't let you they will not let you serve if you're colorblind. And here's another weird fucking That sounds like the <clears throat> most exploitable thing ever. Uh yeah. Uh, I like the shirt that says uh, like, fuck the it, colorblind it, and it's, <laughs> it's like, hey, why did you find a gray zapper here for the table? <laughs> he is uh my my father-in-law is red, green, colorblind, uh, which is weird because he bought a red Fiat. Uh, so, what shade of brown does that look like to him? Couldn't tell you. Uh, I don't see, even like the other version of Eric Clapton. I don't see into my father-in-law's eyes. Look into <laughs> my father-in-law's eyes. My father-in-law. No. My father loves ass. <laughs> <laughs> Just really ruins a mediocre song. Yeah, yeah. How do you make something bad worse? <laughs> More syllables. Uh, they they didn't let my when my dad was my dad graduated in 1964, and I'm pretty sure Vietnam War was going on then. But he had he was a single father, and because he was a single father, I think this is the reason why they didn't send him off since. That the piece of shit woman left, uh, whose name will not be spoken. Uh, she, because she left, I don't think they would let him go off to Vietnam. Even though Karen, I, even though I kind of like talking to Greg, he was like, you know what? Growing up, like my dad was my big brother, and grandmother and my grandma and grandfather were 
the my parents. parents. Yeah, they ca- kind of like that because I remember he. I think he told me because it was all like twenty 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 twenty. He was nineteen when Greg was born. Yeah, Jesus. so uh, he was nineteen when Greg was born. He was thirty nine when I was born, which means me and my brother and my dad are almost all twenty years apart. So let's see. I'll be thirty three. Uh, Greg is fifty three, and my dad is seventy two. So what in Wilmington? Or Outer Banks? Hey, or, no, or no. they it? are looking to go out there because of his might-as-well-be wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a house out there. The uh, The parents have a house, and then I think the mother or father passed away. Somebody passed away and left the house, so they're trying to get the semantics. He wants to go out there and just open up a small marina and just fish and like be a like cook at a seafood restaurant out there till till he dies. I would love that for him because he loves fishing and he loves the water. He loves all that. And he loves to cook. Um, so I would love that for that. And for, you know, if I wanted to go see him, I could go out there. We could hang out and, and do stuff like that. I, just, I don't get to see him that much. I wish I did, but uh, it's still in the works. I think they live up near Kernersville, Winston High, okay. Greens. Something like that. Green, Greenston Salem. <clears throat> Greenston Salem. I like that. Greenston Salem Point. Winstonboro. <laughs> Lexing Point. <laughs> Thomas's Lexing Point. Home of chairs and barbecue, and a really kick-ass music uh, uh, music store. Uh, in Lexington, there's guitar store U- or Guitars USA. They have an awesome selection of stuff. I bought. My blue guitar there when I had it. Don't have it anymore. Uh, I still have room on the wall for one more guitar. I'm thinking it's going to be an electric. But if I'm going to buy an amp, Emily's like, "You don't play electric. Why are you going to buy an amp?" I'm like, "Why does a dog lick himself?" Why do you have your DVDs? I got something. I got a retort to say to her. Well, the thing too is, like, I want to play. Like, I have all the amp software on the on the on the computer, but. It's not the same as moving a 4x12 cabinet with, you know, gusto like that. But I am thinking about uh, trying to find a cover band in the area who needs a rhythm guitar player uh, for gigs on the weekend. So I don't have to... I love singing, but I do a lot of singing a year. So it'd be nice to have, like, a cover band where I could just play rhythm guitar and just go do that gig and... But I'm thinking about downsizing because that 4 by 12 cabinet carrying it out to venues would be hilarious. That thing's yeah, heavy. It, it would not make it beyond the laundry room if even that far. It's heavy. If it's all regular use. I carried it uh, upstairs by myself uh, when I bought it. That's a, if, for, for those of you not in the know, that's a Mesa buggy rectifier cabinet it's four by 12 oversized rectifier cabinet uh it's a 280 watts it is hilariously heavy and i carry it up here rectifier with a leading w i wish um but what's (laughs) funny that's monster of a box yeah i'm thinking about getting a two by 12 because it's a lot more portable but i don't move it anyway but if i did like if if i happen to get the gig with a uh, cover band or any kind of band, I would just buy a two by twelve. But Wampler pedals makes a triple rec pedal, which is a rectifier, a Mesa rectifier clone, and uh, it's spelled with a W. A rectifier or a triple rec, and there are the, to give you an idea of the uh, the level of brutality on on this pedal. It's it's a stop box made for heavy metal. There are two settings on this pedal. One setting is hard, and one setting is brutal. <laughs> There's only two settings on it. So that just gives you kind of an idea of, of the Wampler Triple Rec. Uh, that's a neat pedal, but it's not, it's not cheap. And I'm just going to buy the Mesa amp. So they're all hand-wired in Petaluma, California. Let's see, Mesa. Let's see. I'll, I'll go through the list of Mesa Buggy artists. Did I tell you the um, the origins of Mesa Buggy? You mentioned that, I don't know, the last go-around or the last bar trip, but uh, do the people know? 
I don't, I don't know. So. The people know. Mm. Therefore, the people got to know. Yeah, Mesa Buggy started in Petaluma, California by a guy with the last name Randall. And he was hot rodding fender amplifiers and making them have more gain. He wanted a good, clean channel. Fender amplifiers are really known for a clean channel, really smooth, clean, and when driven hard, bluesy. So he wanted to have more gain, so he'd have two different channels. So he gave one to Mr. Carlos Santana, and and uh, he was playing. <laughs> the rest of this is history. He's like, man, this thing really boogies. So they just they named it was Mesa Engineering. It's Mesa Engineering or Mesa Buggy. So that's the history of that. And now I've already forgotten what I was looking up. As Steve pours him some more fireside chat, I got my Mesa cabinet for four hundred bucks. Here's what they sell for brand new. Yeah, that's called a deal. In my book, I just showed Steve what they sell for brand new. What does 66% off mean to you? Yeah. Uh, artists. That's what I was looking for. So who plays Mesa Buggy amplifiers? Let's see here. So basically, uh, for the viewers and viewers, listeners, I, I <laughs> fuck that up all the time, and I know I do, and I'm sorry. For the listeners and for Steve, uh, the Mesa sound is a more American vibe, and the Marshall sound is a more British-voiced amplifier, much like a Vox. Vox is British, so Queen uses Vox amplifiers. Uh, The Beatles used Vox. Uh, Marshall, everybody uses Marshall. It's like Pearl Jam, Candlebox. uh, a lot of those guys use Marshall amps, and then the Mesa artists. Have you ever are... seen a Marshall phone? No, it was a stupidly expensive Android phone. Oh, was it from Marshall? Marshall, the music maker, yeah. not the university. <laughs> I didn't know there was a. I did not know there was a university. Well, like, apparently, uh, that. That was the joke you used earlier. We are Marshall. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. yeah it's like, um, Sorry, it's been a long day. Hey, it was a 1970 plane crash mean to you. Let's see. 311 uses uh, Mesa Buggy. Uh, Between the Buried and Me. Al Di Miola. All Hail the Yeti. I don't know who that is. That's a great name. That's a fucking fantastic name. There's a lot of Mesa artists. Uh, Mark Tremonti. Uh... J.J. Reichert from Arrested Development. Oh, the band, not the TV show. Not the TV show. Uh, Mark Tremont. Oh, yeah, I said Mark Tremont already. Chris Kane. Jesus, there's a lot of artists on here. Behemoth. <laughs> little uh, death metal. Another Behemoth. I didn't know they had so many guitar players. Bethany Costantino. Any chick who plays guitar automatically is a little hotter in my in my mind. What about you? Bootsy Collins uses Mesa. Bruce Springsteen. There's a lot of Mesa art. Uh, Pete from Chevelle. I'm a bigger Chevelle fan than you are. I love Chevelle. It's one of those like they're good. I don't listen to much of them. Coheed and Cambria. Which are they? Have you not heard of them? I've heard of them, but I've never heard them. We are going to listen to a song by them as soon as we're off of mic. And after I let you listen to the song, you're going to absolutely love them. John Patrici from Dream Theater plays Mesa. Uh, Kim Thayle from Soundgarden plays Mesa Boogies. These, sh- these should all be... Uh, Good enough, uh, and uh, this should all be good enough indoor seas. There's a lot of guys, but I don't play music, so um, I can't help you. <laughs> you can this help. is fantastic. I am not gonna go buy a Mesa amp, like, I can I would sing love. karaoke kind of flat. I would love to teach you how to play an instrument because Thomas wants to get a drum set. 
So I can teach you how to play bass, and with then we can just have a three-piece band. AJ, with what haste do you wish to teach somebody to drive stick shift? That's different. That's the most infuriating thing to teach anybody how to do. I would rather teach somebody neoclassical jazz than teach somebody how to drive a stick. For some reason, like, that's just one of the hardest fucking things to, to teach somebody how to drive. Like I think the I, I've had two successes with this. My brother and my buddy Josh, who's now in the Navy and a new father. Oh, hey, Josh. You're not listening to this. Uh, where is he stationed? Jacksonville until he's back to Corpus Christi. Woof. Oy. I just picked up an empty glass to try to drink out of it. Here's a better here's a better uh list of Here, try this can instead. Yeah. Santana, Keith Richards, Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits, uh Frank Zappa, Kim Thale, Alex Lifeson, Johnny Marr from the Smiths, Pete Leffler from Chevelle. Uh, Sean Morgan from Cedar, Buckethead, Wes Borland. By the way, Wes Borland from Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit's a shitty fucking band. Wes Borland is a fantastic guitar player. Uh, just in case you didn't know, I always adored his contacts. <laughs> it's like <laughs> black out your eyeballs. That's, uh, that's a magnificently creepy look. Absolutely. Um, Dave Grohl. Uh, James Hetfield and Kirk Hammett from Metallica and Robert Truillo and the late Cliff Burton, rest in peace. Jerry Cantrell. Thankfully not Lars. Because mm. fuck that guy. Exactly. You mean unfortunately not Lars? Because of the death of Cliff? Never mind. Do, have you seen the Metallica I, video of uh, Lars was out uh, sick or something? And uh, you know who filled in on drums for half the show? Was Cliff? No. <laughs> I was like, Wait, what? No, this was this was mid two thousands. Oh. Who filled in on drums? Dave Mc- Grohl. N- heavier. Somebody you would never think to fill in on drums from Metallica. During huh? a sh- during a live show, Joey Jordison. Slipknot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and it was. Awesome. I, it's uh, the first comment on YouTube was, "I wonder how the guys from Metallica feel having a really good drummer behind." Them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so all the guys from Metallica, Rocky George from Suicidal Tendencies, Richard Crisp from Rammstein. Oh shit! Jerry Cantrell, <laughs> David Gilmore from Pink Floyd. Dude, I am so thrilled. Rammstein has a new album in the works coming they out do. in April. They do. <laughs> like, I should listen to more chill stuff. Also, me. Dude, new tool, new Rammstein. <laughs> Kurt Cobain, uh, Mark Morton and Willie Adler from Lamb of God, which Lamb of God is fucking killer, by I the way. I called that my Easter playlist. Uh, and they're from Richmond, Virginia. Surprise. If you live there, you're going to play some evil shit. Pretty much. Adam Jones of Tool plays Mesa Boogies. Uh, Mick Jones Cradle from The Ridge. Clash. Uh, Fieldy, Monkey, and Head from Corn all play them. By the way, Fieldy's real name is Reginald Arev- Reginald Arvizu, and then Monkey's name is James Schaefer. I would probably go by Fieldy and Monkey. Uh, huh? Then we got Robin Fink of Nine Inch Nails uh, plays Mesa Boogie. Paul McCartney plays Mesa Boogie. Uh, let's see here. Ed O'Brien from <laughs> Radiohead. <laughs> Pat O'Brien and Robert Barrett from Cannibal Corpse. There's a lot. That kind of covers the gambit of, of genres here. Uh, a little bit of everything. Prince played him. Andy Timmons, who is a fantastic guitar player. So, uh, so you're saying you can get these in purple? Uh, Zach Blair from Rise Against. Mike Dirks from Guar. <laughs> I'm looking. Uh, Tom DeLonge from Blink-182. Uh, Stone Roses. John, I, I've I've heard very little from the Stone uh, Roses. Stone Roses, good. Twelve Roses, garbage. Twelve, uh, 12 stone, Stones, good. yeah. Twelve yeah, Stones, yeah. good. Yeah, uh, a <laughs> lot, lot of good artists there. But it's more Amer- Mesa is a more American sound. Marshall is the more British mid range. You know, just growly. I could. Mm. So you know the album Ten for Pearl Jam. Uh huh. That was mostly Marshall amplifiers. So okay. the guitar sounds you hear, Marshall amplifiers. And then 
pretty much all of Super Unknown is Ms. Mesa Boogie. So it's a little darker, a little heavier, something like that. That's about the best I can explain it. I'm not good at explaining things uh, on the spot. Especially something so abstract from... How does your amp sound depending well, it would, on the weather? It would, it, it's like me explaining amplifiers and sounds to you would be like you explaining any electronic thing to me. I would just look at you with this sort of blank stare going, I don't know what I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> That's what makes the world go round. We're all different. We're all good at different things. Steve, I'm hoping gets that job. If he gets that job, I'm taking him out to dinner, and that's a promise. All the tacos. Well, it depends on what you want to eat that day. If you want tacos, we can do that. Toby and I did have an idea of opening up a hot dog stand and having the uh, all the hot dogs be different. So we have like the taco dog and then like the pizza dog. And then, like, the hamburger, do- like, th- d- have all sorts of different hot dog. Like, the taco dog would obviously have, like, shredded cheese, salsa, you know, little ground beef. The irony being you need to put a trailer hitch back on the Jeep for to do this. Yes, but then I would do, like, some of the XJ guys and get a really rusted out XJ and then chop it off from the windshield forward and then throw away that part and then use the back as the hatch. <laughs> They've done that. I've promised you they've done that because XJ guys. Like are, you forgot what a Comanche is. Well, you know, but I, I think it's a good one's tough to come by though. Well, it's like, to build your own would be way easier. Yeah, a pizza dog would be awesome. Just the regular hot dog, and then instead of the the bun would be oh, you'd have the regular all beef hot dog, and then have the bun be pizza crust, and then and. Like, instead of mustard ketchup, you'd have pizza sauce and marinara, and then shredded cheese, and then, like, peppers and onions on top. Be still my heart, because this is what this food's going to do to you. Yes. And then the taco dog would be the same. It'd be salsa and cheese. And, uh, <laughs> then the uh, the Philly cheese dog. We can have that. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Mine sans mushrooms. Yours with. I'll take yours. That's okay, too. Uh, see, this, this is a good idea, but... I don't know what we would call the hot dog stand. We got to have some kind of clever name that draws your attention in. And a dog crash. <laughs> we have a winner. <laughs> I got to figure out what I'm going to eat for dinner tonight because you have yeah, dinner wait, plans. You said M's bringing you food. No, I said M would bring us food oh. if you didn't have dinner plans. She's just going to eat a wrap or something since she. Is sick all the time. It's so seven. So I'd imagine she's back. I don't know. I'm gonna send her a message because I'm much too lazy to just get up. Well, we are still here recording, and I don't know what level of banter I'm prepared to offer the people. Well, we're already an hour and forty seven in. Which this has flown by today. Yep. Um, not that it usually crawls by, but it's usually not this fast. Uh, I got a little bit left. You got a little bit left? No, no it's done. No, it's done? We got time for one more? Mm, this is, uh... Call it. Yeah. Fuck. We had some two really good ones, too, to go. Uh, but that's okay. We can wait till next time. Uh, I'll, I'll at least save but, one. But wait, there's more. Oh. Beers for next pod? Oh, yeah. Emily's already home. <laughs> uh. Well, we will. I will save one can. I am. Each. You're not listening to this. I'll save one can each for next time. So we'll 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 delve into that. But uh, this was a productive episode. I was trying to explain to uh, this lovely lady we have working for us uh, Monday through Friday in the morning. Don't at work lie to now. us about her. She's cool. I call her Boots because she has these like cute little boots she wears when her feet get cold. Are they with the fur? No. Good. They're around the fur with some deft tones. No, no, <laughs> eh? no, no, Chino. <laughs> Coolest name ever. Uh, but I was explaining to her about the podcast. I let her listen to the intro and just, she's like, that sounds really nice. I was like, you know, what's funny is you listen to it and then the first 30 minutes are us m- mostly sober 
And then the next 30 minutes to an hour are it's a little drunker. And then by the end of the episode, it's just a, just a shit show. And she goes, I'm going to have to listen to that. I was like, you should, Boots. You should. <laughs> uh, so, there was a lady on Will of Fortune last night. Yes. Whose nickname was Possum. You just playing. I wish, <laughs> I wish it was like you're a menace to anything good in the world, and of course this creature wins. Oh, oh! Is it like the weird woman who used to come to Saucer and like touch us all and like? Do you remember the golf ball? She, I haven't a, seen her. Yes, two. I coined that phrase. Ugh. She, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah um, you, you know when you have an itch on your back you can't reach and just it's it's incessant. Uh huh. That's what she reminds me of. Uh huh. She's gross. Uh huh. She's not listening, so we can say whatever we want to about her. <laughs> and on that horrible fucking note, I think that's it for today. So. I'm going to stick my thumb through my eyeball and uh, wish y'all a do. Please don't do that. I think you have soulful eyeballs. And you need those for your inter- your interviews tomorrow? It's a phone interview, so uh, I've, my confidence is a bit shot at that notion. Uh, Well, you know what? You're pretty good at this whole thing where people are listening and not looking at you or anything, so you're kind of used to it by now. Just picture like you're just talking with me, except let's just keep it. G rated on the interview. I've already interviewed with this company once before, a year and a half ago, for a lesser position. That one didn't pan out. And the guy that got a position, Brian hated. So there's that. Well, but, well, jokes on y'all. You've got to pay me more to do, you no, know, basically the same job, but points elsewhere. Cool. The key is to not make yourself sound great. It's to make yourself sound like they only think about you when they're looking to hire. Because when I look for people... That's such a fine line. Well, when I look for people to hire, I don't look for the most qualified. I look for the most available and the person who will do what I ask them to do. And who is reliable and just genuinely a good person with good vibes. I've only had to fire one person. This is the first time I've interviewed twice with the same company. So there's that. Well, that's all I got for you. And I hope it's good enough advice, even though it's not great advice. But <laughs> if you're if you're likable and you can do what people ask you to do... And you're willing to do that, and you can still do this podcast with me and have fun with your buddy, that's good enough for me. We got a lot of good beers coming up, so I'm hoping we can get through them next time. But in the meantime, thank you for listening to us. Everybody wish Steve good luck on his interview tomorrow. I certainly am. I would give my arm and leg to have him be in a job he loved, because I love this guy to pieces. I've been AJ. And I'm Steve. Steve, we're done, and I'm going to use my mouse to save this project when we're done. I didn't say threadles yet. You haven't said threadles. And I really miff that my cohort is already interviewing for a different job. Brian? Some point elsewhere. No, uh, our guy that's... Uh, my misery says hi. The other guy in third says hi as well. Do you want me to kill him? No, let's not kill him. Do you want me to maim him? No. Do you want me to inconvenience him in a way he can't make an interview? Dude, he already looks third shift with me. He knows inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's like six Fair months enough. in, like he's already looking like cool. Yeah. Well, hell, Kurt already knows I'm trying to get out of this place, and uh, it's going to be real damn funny if the both of us are because take this job and listen, listen to it. Ta- Listen to the song. You know what you gotta do. I was gonna say, take this job and my own summer from Deftones, <laughs> and it's come around again. So I guess on that note. So I've been AJ. 
And I'm still Steve. I love you guys. Be good to each other. This is CBG Pod episode 25. We'll see you in two weeks. And we're Cut. done. And you didn't say it. Well, I did a moment ago. It was threedles, not toodles. All right. Fordles. <laughs> Later. Wundles. Thank you.